Most welcome to Heidegger 1249 and we will continue uh, with the book of Roberto Mangabeira Anger and the Smolin. And as I said last time, it was a very commendable quote. that I just have to repeat it, it's so good. It was the revolutionary accomplishment of the social theory of the 19th century to carry this conception into far-reaching fame, that the structures of social life are made and imagined. They are not to be treated as natural phenomena, as part of the furniture of the universe. So there was a questioning of these laws and one come to understand that they are mutable and susceptible to historical change, which is time. What else would time be? And clearer and clearer I understand that he has a point. Newtonian time is big, no time. There is no time in the Newtonian paradigm, not at all. But One good corollary, color, corollary is that they can change, and that makes them real. But we are got used to to have natural laws as something part of the universe and immutable, and the very thing that they are not open to question or falsification makes them real. So the problem with them that Berger is pointing out here, this is taken among everyone, including me, I would say, until I read this, as a sure sign. Hmm, this is real. This is the real McCoy. that what we mean with naturalness, natural, yeah, naturallessness and the timelessness of mathematics is what endows us with the sense that this is truly real. This is the real thing. and how there could ever be something new in the universe that is not just a ghost-like possible, a pre-reality waiting to be made. And it goes both ways, I would say. It goes on the way of the subject, me as an observer, of course, I think that goes without saying, we know that. Observer. Is out. Is the red pen for that. But the more interesting point, I would say, and the new one, is that the observed is 
given properties that I used to think and before one read Lee Smolin and Roberto Unger, and that is that the observed, the object, goes out of the window. and if replaced with transcendentals, which is nothings. So we're losing equally at both ends. The loss is ours, but the loss is also science. The science about the observed. And uh, I would say it's the last reading that really punched that idea in. Because do be aware, this takes a lot of repetition until the understanding comes. We are so used to this thinking. But obviously the observed goes out of the window as well. I can't see the use of having anything observed. Once we established that the laws are timeless, because they come from mathematics, which has a very, very specific feature, that of being timeless, like logic. But timelessness doesn't go hand in hand with reality. We just force timelessness on reality and we get, as a result, classical physics. On the obs point of the observer and on the observed. So in a way, what Unger and Smolin are proposing is definitely not a new physics or a new ideology. It is opening up what is already out there. Nothing needs to be cast away. It's the general behind tendency. very good news. It was helpful. For me it was a pedagogical tune uh, that Roberto Mangueira wrote in his own area. So he, yes, he is a philosopher, but he is also a social scientist politician, if I remember correctly. And it's so obvious that we imported, once upon a time, all the aspects of classical physics into the social sciences, and got as an extra bonus, so to speak, timeless laws where Karl Marx is definitely one of the proponents even more so Engels I think I'll continue here and see if I can round up with a little bit more of pedagogy I will try to get more didactic and it's getting easier for me. It's, it's the understanding when it comes. It is easier to transfer to you, listeners, 
years. In fact, the fundamental laws of history do not exist. History has no script. There is nevertheless a path-dependent trajectory of constraints and causal connections that are no less real because we are unable to infer them from laws of historical change. We can build the next steps in historical experience only with materials. physical, institutional, and conceptual, made available by what came before. However, the force and character of this legacy of constraint is itself up for grabs in history. By creating institutional and ideological structures that facilitates their own revision and diminish the dependence of change on crisis, we can lighten the burden of the past. In the subsequent history of social theory, these three necessitarian illusions have ceased increasingly to be believable. Yet students of society continue to use a vocabulary that relies on them. And to display habits of mind formed through their use. For example, those who profess not to believe in any of them resort to a concept like capitalism as if they did.
the illusion of the higher order laws of historical transformation has been the first to fall. The illusions of the closed list of alternative institutional systems and of their indivisibility have sometimes survived in a climate of half-belief. When they persist, they imply a conception that, although it may seem plausible to many social theorists and historians, remains undeveloped and unsupported. That there are laws specific to different institutional and ideological formations in history. Such effective laws, however, emerge and evolve together with the formations themselves. No fundamental laws stand behind them, guiding their co-evolution. It is a view reminiscent of ways of thinking long established. although also unexplained. In the life sciences, but to this day, foreign to physics. A major reason why the idea of the co-evolution of laws and of states of affairs has failed to be more developed in our thinking about society and history is that contemporary social science has for the most part taken an entirely different direction.
social science has repudiated the necessitarian assumption only because it has rejected the central insight of classical social theory. The insight into the made and imagined character of social life. as well into structural discontinuity and structural alternatives in history. Its dominant tendency is to naturalize the established institutions and practices by representing them as the outcome of a progressive functional evolution. According to this view, the established arrangements of contemporary societies result from cumulative trial by experience. What works better survives, and in parenthesis that goes for both theories and laws. What works less well relative to the competing solutions on offer fails. We may therefore expect to see in history a halting but cumulative convergence of societies to the same set of best practices and institutions. Nowhere is this view more fully developed than in the most influential social science. Economics At least as soon as economics abandons 
the refuge that it has taken ever since late 19th century marginalism. In analytical purity, and deploys its methods in the design of policy and in the explanation of behavior. According to this view, there is no special problem about the structure. A market economy works best and it has a largely predetermined legal and institutional content. A content exemplified by the regimes of private property and free contract that have come to prevail in the North Atlantic societies. The result of this way of thinking is to conceal under a veneer of naturalness and necessity what is most decisive and enigmatic in historical experience the ways in which the institutional and conceptual presupposition of social life get established and remade. In the absence of insight into this most fundamental problem of social and historical study, The vital link between insight into the actual and imagination of the adjacent possible is severed. Social science then degenerates into 
right-wing Hegelianism, the retrospective rationalization of a world whose historical vicissitudes and transformative opportunities it is powerless to grasp. The task presented to social thought by this history of ideas is to salvage and radicalize the central insight of classical social theory into the made and variable character of the structures of social science. the institutional arrangements and ideological assumptions shaping the routine activities and conflicts of a society. These institutional and ideolo ideological regimes are frozen politics we must rescue this insight from the necessitarian assumptions that eviscerated its meaning and reach in that theoretical tradition We must recognize our stake in the creation of structures that are so arranged that they empower us to defy and revise them without needing crisis as the condition of change. We must acknowledge the reality of constraint and the power of sequence 
that help explain the prevailing arrangements and assumptions. We must acknowledge it, however, without conferring on such influences a mendacious semblance of necessity and authority. We must re-establish the indispensable link in social and historical study between insight into the actual and exploration of the adjacent possible. On this basis, we must exercise the prerogative of the programmatic imagination. The vision of alternatives connected by intermediate steps to the here and now. especially alternative institutional forms of democracy. Markets and free civil societies Such a project provides no model for a cosmology that does justice to the singular existence of the universe as well as to the inclusive reality of time. It nevertheless has an affinity to such a cosmology. 
it is connected to it by its commitment. to a practice of causal explanation. That dispenses with the invocation of timeless laws governing events in time. It is bound to it as well by its insistence on seeing the basic Constituents, constitu constituents of the reality that it addresses. For social and history study, the formative institutional and ideological contexts of social science. For physics, the elementary constituents of nature as evolving discontinuously in time. The institutional and ideological regimes melt down periodically in those incandescent moments. Of practical and visionary strife. and become at such times more available to reshaping so too nature passes through times in which its arrangements break down and its regularities undergo accelerated change. A difference is that we can hope to change forever the character of the structures and their relation to our structure defying freedom. Nature, so far as we know, enjoys no such escape.
the two kindred projects of